Hey, how's everybody doing today? Uh, it's been a couple weeks since I've done a video, but I've been really busy putting a lot of different stuff together. I made some changes, did some cable management, and the VR headsets in. I am absolutely thrilled. But before we go on with that, I want to give a thanks to Fox 3 Managed Solution, sponsoring my DCS server, which is DFA server. If you're looking for a dedicated DCS server that caters to just DCS, you can get something small for a good price and even the larger servers, which go, I think, all the way up to 128. They've got it. The prices are good and just a peace of mind having my own. I really like it. So once again, thank you, Fox 3 Managed Solutions. I ain't never going to leave you guys. All right, let's get on to the headset. So I picked up the Vario Arrow, A-E-R-O, spelled a little different. So what comes with it, as you'll see in a, in a minute, I clipped earlier a part of the video where it has a little power adapter. Basically, it's a USB-C into the front that comes out. You can see this cable, which goes in here, USB-C. It's all marked. Vario is like right on top of things. D to D. So that goes in there. The cable runs and what you're going to need is a way to hang it, whether you use a cable um, set up like I did with these. I have a eighth inch cable running across the corner of the room and the cable is 12 and a half feet long, five meters, the USB-C cable I'm talking about. Plenty, plenty of cable and it runs over to that power adapter that comes with the headset. These are great. So as you move along, and Kiwi makes some, and it's like $50 for the kit, and I get the same exact thing, it just doesn't say Kiwi on it, for like a quarter of that price off of Amazon, and it's steel, stainless steel cable covered with, uh, with um, nylon or a plastic coating. Same exact thing. These little, these little things right here, you can tighten them so you can adjust the length if you want it to have a lot of slack, a lot of play, or if not. And it comes with all the little clips. Everything you need. They sell the whole thing. I think it's like, it was like $17 or something like that. So anyways, on to the headset. I got this in. I've had it for about a week now. I absolutely love it. Wow. I, I, I know I didn't... A lot of people would start out like with the Quest or something down in that area, which is absolutely great VR from what I have read about and watched about, but I kind of tend to go overkill on things. So I ended up getting the Vario now. I know that a lot of people are kind of pissed off that Vario isn't going to be supporting the Arrow after 2025, which is going to leave over 12 months before they probably stop supporting it. And there's already a lot of third-party apps coming out that are working well with this, like OpenXR. You don't even need, with OpenXR, if you, if you get the composite, the OpenXR compositor, you don't even need to really use the, the Vario setup. Now, I use Steam. The OpenXR allows you to bypass the Steam if you know how to do it the right way. I haven't even installed it yet because I'm still just amazed with even what it looks like off of Steam VR. It, it's, it's incredible. I love it. So let's talk about some of the things that I, I noticed with this that I didn't... Oh, these are separate and we'll talk about that with the sound setup. These are off the ear. They're made by VR ears and I think they sound like really, really great. I'm, I like bass and they do carry more bass than some of the other options. Some people said they had some problems with them. I absolutely didn't. The only thing that I am not happy with, with VR ears, is for $120 that they charge for this. I didn't pay anything near that. I found them on eBay. On eBay. They were $39, brand new, in this box, wrapped in plastic. It wasn't used at all, which is a great deal, and there's plenty of them out there. So if, if you're gonna buy them, I would definitely go there. They don't give you a microphone. That microphone could probably, would have probably cost them like two or th two dollars tops to add that in. And if if somebody's buying this headset from the site, 
which is, what's the name of this? Yeah, Rebuff Reality. And they're paying over $100. They, they damn well should be getting a microphone. So I'm definitely sending them an email on that. Even for $39, they could afford to give a little microphone. So enough of my ranting. Let's get on to the headset. The quality of this is just above and beyond anything out there. Everything I've looked at has material type straps. You can buy aftermarket plastic or uh, 3D printed headpieces or uh, whatever to go on there that can give it more support. But I wasn't too thrilled. That's one of the reasons I went with this is because of the way it looked as far as build quality. These headpieces are all adjustable. You have adjustments on the side, you have adjustments in the front, and you have adjustments in the back. When you're wearing this, you don't even know you have it on. I, I've wore it now for the last, like I said, I got it last week. And I've had times where I was in a game for over three hours and I had no issues whatsoever. As far as, like I said, adjustability, this will bring it in and out. It's nice and smooth. This right here just for the top of the head as you can see. So I guess if you have a big old egg-shaped head, you can really <laughs> you can really adjust it. So mine kind of stays in the middle. And this right here angles it. So you can tilt it up, tilt it back. So they pretty much got everything figured out. I mean, spot on. As far as this goes, I was thinking about looking into a third party piece to go around here. This is made of type of a, a, a pleather. It's, it's Velcroed on, as you can see. Okay, it's Velcroed on there. It fits well, but I, I like with my headset, my Logitech, what are they, Logitech Pro X, I love that headset. I've tried every other headset out there from Steel Series, everything. I couldn't find anything that sounded as good as those Logitechs. I just really like the sound of them. But anyways, I changed the ear pads over to a material. The pleather is fine, it fits well, but I just like the softness and the pleather can get a little sweaty, even if you've got good ventilation in the headset. It can still get a little bit sweaty where it goes on if you, if you, like, you run hot. So the material is a little bit better for breathing and I know they do make some out there. Okay. So enough of that. So what happens when you get these and you put them on? This is incredible. These lenses adjust to your eyes. So when you put it on, it automatically, you'll hear it going, <laughs> sound effects, huh? <laughs> and it adjusts to the, the width of your eyes, the height of your eyes, wherever they're set. And it has foveated rendering, which basically where you look in the screen, and I'm sure if anybody's watching this, and if you've been into VR, foveated rendering, basically at the area where you're looking is where it focuses in perfectly clear. I'm not saying that around that area you lose focus, but it takes away, I guess, from the pixels and puts more into that area, uh, makes that resolution higher in that area. So everything is crystal clear. So I can lean over in the plane, the F-18, the F-16, and I can look down and I can see every artificial scratch, letter, number, digit, whatever you want to call it, perfectly clear. Out in the distance, when you look up, you can see how it, fo it focuses in so fast, you, you can't tell the difference. And I haven't, like I said, I haven't even gone to OpenXI, which people say is better. Some people say they didn't see a big difference. Some of the reviewers really liked it a lot more. So anyways, we've looked at the adjustments and this is like quality stuff. Everything is just padded. It's nice and soft. It just, they cater to mostly government sites, Lockheed, Martin, Boeing. I, um, they're made in Finland. The Finland military, I guess their air force is what they practice with training their pilots as well as, like I said, Boeing, Lockheed, Martin, Martin and so on. This is the company they use. You're going to pay a price for this stuff. If you can get them used and they're in good shape, 
and you trust where you're getting it from, that would probably be a, a good option. Seeing that they're not available to buy for the public right now from Vario, prices are starting to go back up again. They were 2000 just for the headset. They dropped to 990 and now I'm starting to see the prices climb really fast. So you get what you pay for and you're paying big money, you're getting big quality. Like I said, I don't normally, like I, I was thinking about going with like the, what do they call it, the MetaQuest 3. And I decided if I'm gonna do it, I'll do it all the way. This will hold its value, I hope. The, it came, the packaging was outstanding. I, I can't complain about that. The box, this, this weighs one pound, six ounces. The box that came in was like nine pounds with all the, all the stuff that was packed and the foam and everything. And it was like out, out of this world. The material on the outside is a nice plastic. On This is like a, a canvas covering material, but it's covering, I guess, like some thin plastic under there. On the inside, everything's a rubber. As you can see, it's a softer rubber, which is really nice. On the front of this, this isn't glass. This is a flexible plastic. And this is where I guess all the little cameras are or whatever that picks up. You do need to purchase base stations. If you already have, say, the Vive 1.0 or the 2.0's base stations hooked up, you're golden. You can't really, unless they send you a, a sample, if you're a reviewer or something, and, and you get the XR2, XR3, and they just came out with the XR4 version of this. That's inside out, outside in type tracking. So you get that VR, XR, or whatever they call it, where, where you can actually see stuff on the outside. This is strictly virtual rea reality. It, you, you don't see anything from the outside. Everything's in the headset. This is actually a plastic, thin plastic, you can see. It's a little flexible. Don't wanna to press too hot on it, even though it's just a plastic cover, I, I don't wanna break it. Everything is marked in so you can remember exactly where your settings are. As far as the back, you loosen and tighten that as it goes on. Everything on here that's made, there's no battery pack. Everything on here is made well. You can see this back piece right in here where it tightens and loosens. Everything's well protected. You can see what's all screwed in there. It's nice and thick. The knobs are easy to, to handle. And this is something that I think everybody should think of for your first upgrade that you're going to do with these. I wouldn't call it an upgrade, but I'd say it's definitely something. I, I ended up using VRobtrician.com. Very good price. Uh, they were made in Germany. They were shipped over relatively fast. It tells you right on here, your right and your left. So I don't even know actually how these go, so you guys are getting to get, watch me do this for the first time. My understanding is, is they just clip right on. That's it, and they're done, bingo. Now on to sound. You don't get any built-in sound with this headset, which is kind of a bummer, but it is what it is. You're paying for the video and you're getting very good quality video. You're getting the best. I know the Primax Crystal is right up there. I understand it has a wild, wider field of view vertically, horizontally, but honestly, when you're inside of this, from everything I've been watching, it, it doesn't make a big of a difference. And plus there's third party apps that kind of work like Track IR would work, but it gives you a, looking over your right or your left shoulder, you press a button, it gives you another 15 to 20%. So you don't need to literally sit up in your seat and turn around and, and, and strain your neck. Now again, back to the sound, I. I'm going to do a full review on these. I just got the stuff, but I wanted to try a couple different things. And let me grab this. I've been listening to those. I let them run for a few hours earlier, and they sound really, really nice. They're a little bassier. They, so a lot of people, especially in like DCS, 
you want bass. A lot of explosions, a lot of machine gunning. You get that growling noise of the engine. So that's, you know, a good thing. But they are crystal clear. But another thing I was thinking I wanted to try is I ended up picking these up. They go over the shoulder. They're made by Monster. It's called the Monster Boomerang. It has built-in microphones. And like I said, that really kind of pissed me off a little bit. No microphone came with them headset. That was, that was really lousy. I think that's a poor, poor move on their part. These have incredible sound. I mean, it, it blows these away. There's no comparison. It's like going from $20 car speakers to $500 Bose. It's, it's that much of a difference. It's crystal clear. And it has a microphone in it. And I tested it with music going, speaking to someone, and it doesn't pick it up. It's got some kind of noise canceling set up in it. And the mic isn't half bad. It sounds pretty good. It's located somewhere in here. You can go underwater with these things. They're completely waterproof. Just got to make sure you've got the USB-C cord. They're very flexible. You pop them over your neck and you don't even feel them on your shoulders. They're light. It's kind of like a, a heavy rubber. This is material. Same type of heavy rubber over here. They do make what they call a petite version. I think it's the same speakers, but it's thinner. The buttons are on the top over here. I ended up just going with the regular size. I didn't really think that petite made much of a difference. But incredible. And I tell you, if you, if you don't want to use off-the-ear speakers, like I, I didn't want to use regular speakers. It's, it's tough enough being in a headset, a VR headset for me. I ain't saying for everybody, but being in a, a VR headset, you're in there, you don't see the outside world, and then you have an over-the-ear headset on, you're, you're basically like in the dark. It's, it's not in the dark, but you don't see or hear anything going on. It's like the other day I had the headset on, I was in the VR, and I had the uh, Logitech headset on. My daughter came in, and I didn't even know she was there till she walked up, walked up. She came in the house, shut the door, walked right up to me, tapped me on the shoulder. I was like, oh, my God. It scared the hell out of me. You don't expect that. With something off the ear, you don't have to worry about that. That's not an issue. You can hear what's going on around you, and you can still get good sound. So that's a, that is definitely another option. I, I'm, I might, I'm going to tr probably try both. I'm going to leave these on. You don't have to turn them on. And I'll use this and just see how to do I know these sound better. These are crystal. I mean, I, I was so shocked when I listened to these. I, I just, wow. I was wowed. But anyways, we're good. we'll do a review on the sound for this stuff a different day. The main review was is I wanted to talk a little bit about the build quality of this. Um, I, I haven't had this enough or long enough than to be able to say that I've got this down really well. I just wanted to go over the quality of the build. It has great build quality. Everything is aluminum and heavy plastic. It sits on your head. Vario, or some people call them Vago, or Vajo, or I, I just Vario. I think it's a silent J or something. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's amazing. It's a whole different world. I absolutely fell in love with it. I didn't think I was going to, I have tinnitus. So I didn't think I was going to be able to handle it. I thought I would get sick. And the first time I got in it and I started flying, I didn't have anything dialed in as far as like video updated to drive. I, I didn't have nothing in. When I got up and I rolled over, I, I felt like I was going to fall out of something. I was like, I started messing around with some of the settings. You can mess around with the settings in your NVIDIA control panel. Your windows, you can change some of the settings in there as far as like your performance to power. Your NVIDIA drivers need to be updated. I had to update the firmware. And all in all, everything's starting to come together and it's looking better and better and better every time I use it. My first impression when I turn... Now, let's not make have any illusions that 
this is easier to use than say you have a good 4K monitor. I have a 43 inch 120 hertz Sony TV and it looks great. VR is a whole different thing as far as how it looks. Once you get used to it, it's, I, I would say it's as good if not clearer in some areas than the television can be, but the TV is just, it's made already. This is still growing technology. It's, it's getting better every day. I didn't expect it, like I thought I was gonna get into it and I was gonna be completely surrounded and like, wow, but it, it looks like you can literally reach down and like grab the buttons. It's, it's just so, it, it tricks your mind into like making you think that you're there. But anyways, once I started messing around with the settings and I'm still doing it, I'm still figuring things out. Every time I get in, it's looking a little better, a little better. It's, it's becoming something that I know I'm not going back. Now, as far as making like videos in the game, I'll probably still use a monitor because using OBS and other apps to do any type of recording is very difficult. It's not easy at all. It really puts a strain. These will go up to 90 hertz. I just finally got, what is it? Um, FPS VR is the app or something like that. And if you're getting 75, 90 frames per second, things are looking real good. It's nice and smooth. I think anything over 45, it's probably pretty good. I remember a few years ago, if people were getting 45 on DCS, they were thrilled back in the old 2080 days and stuff. But I can get like 120 easy on the television. So it, yeah, it's two different games. So anyways, I wanted to just give a, probably I was gonna say a quick rundown, but this video isn't that short. So I'm gonna mess around for a few more weeks with this, get things dialed in more, come back. I'm gonna do a review on the audio. That's gonna be kind of a separate thing for what option you would choose to go with. I think either option, if you like headphones, fine. If you like off-the-ear headphones like this, fine. I, I, I like off-the-ear. They don't get as hot, and you can at least hear what's going on in the world around you. Or if you want to use something that rests on your neck like the boomerangs. And it literally looks like a boomerang. There's all kinds of good options out there. So something to think about. That's what I do reviews for to find out ways to make things better, give people ideas, and it gives me a chance to even work on myself as far as like trying to figure out what works best for me. Okay, so on that note, I'm gonna wrap this up, get on to doing a few other things here. I gotta get some things hooked up, and we're gonna take a quick look right now at what I mean about hooking up the wiring for the cable and stuff, so bear with me. So basically, like I said, I put up a 1 8 wire, runs right across my room. Yeah, I know, huh? Crazy. And it has the reels. That's what I call them. We use those. We use these at my work, but they're a lot smaller for like badge holders. And it holds the cable right up. So when I, the cable's connected, I pick it up. The reel goes right up. The wire tightens up. So, and, and, it, and it's pretty free. It doesn't, there's no strain on it. It takes everything off your shoulders. You don't feel a cable a USB-C cable, here it is right here. You can see it's, it's a long, a little out of focus there. But it's a long USB cable, USB-C cable, you can see it attaches there, runs there, goes in back on my other monitor, comes down onto the desk and goes up into the box over there. Take a quick look around the back of the computer. Like I was saying, this is what I ended up using to turn the power on and off to the headset. Instead of, I didn't like the idea of pulling the USB cable out of the headset or pulling it out of this little converter box. Eventually, I know it would have messed something up. I know it. It, it, it would have screwed something up. You have your 12 volt plug, goes in. These are built in USB-C. It runs all right down. One goes to your U, not USB-C, USB, USB 3.1. 
and the other one goes to a 1.4 display port. I might need to get a little longer cable for the it puts a little bit strain on there but still I don't know if I got to move these up yet because I still have to put the screws back in the side here it holds the cable in place that the display port cable or actually it's the USB cable it loops down through there but there's plenty of room for this to slide over so I think I can move these up more these are adjustable they screw on, they clamp down, and you can move them, angle them more. You have to take them off. There's a screw that you loosen and whatnot. But like I said, we're not going to get deep into that. I still have to uh, get this stuff all squared away. All right, so let's wrap it up there. This is the rig. This is the rig. I've got a lot of stuff going on over here. Somebody made a comment the other day on Reddit, they were like, how do you remember all them buttons? And honestly, I'm learning a button every day. So in about 150 years, I'll know all the buttons. All right, so we'll see, uh, we'll see you next week, or we'll see you in a few days anyways. I'll have something else to look at. Probably get, get on to doing the sound. Um, both of these sound systems, the headset as well as the boomerang, when you get them, hook them up to some music and just let them run. They, they do need some breaking in time. I know it sounds weird, but after a couple hours of letting those just go with music on YouTube, I found something on YouTube and just let it run over and over again. Almost about 75% as loud as it would go. That's another thing you got to do is turn your Windows volume 100% up and use the volume on the headset it works separately that's the way they recommend you use it we'll see you in the next video everybody peace out